In landscapes, tree roots expand outward as a tree grows, always reaching beyond the crown. That's because the crown sheds water to the drip line as it rains. But drought can take its toll on trees. The star drip irrigation system considers the manner in which tree roots grow. I will show Albuquerque homeowner Tammy Felix how to install the star drip irrigation system. Tammy, you had me here to look at some trees and they're not yes. looking real good. Yes, no, they're not. This, well, this looked really not. well two years ago. It was nice and bloomed and now it's dead. I look at it here, it's had problems with boars. Yes. And that's probably aggravated by the fact it's Very so, much. been so dry. Drought really hurts a tree. How do you water your trees? Well, we water them at least once or twice a day and we use the, the hose and we water the whole tree down or sprinkle the tree down and then we make a mound of water for the tree. That could be part of the problem. One, that's too often to be watering a cherry tree. And also you're putting water right here and as a tree grows, the roots move out. Mm -hmm. And so we're not putting water in the right place. Okay. So you've got a live cherry tree over here. Yes. Let's go look at it and see if we can't build an irrigation system okay. that'll work for Great. it. We already have a drip irrigation ring around the base of the tree. Here's a supply line bringing water in from the main irrigation system valves. Mm -hmm. And we have drip emitters spaced every foot around here. So they're going to drip water around the base of the tree, irrigating this tree. And it's at the drip line. That's where the water drips off the tree. So there's roots here looking for water. They expect water here. Inside here, it's dry all the time. Right. So they're not looking for water there. Then, because there are roots going out further, we're going to take some more drip irrigation. We're going to run it outwards. So now we'll be looking like the root system Like a there. root system, okay. And so all we have to do then is cut it here and tee that into it. Okay, we need to cut this line here. We're going to use some utility scissors for that. We're going to insert a T. Attach both ends so we now have reconnected the ring. And now we're going to attach the radial portion that runs outward. And to make sure it stays, we'll put a pin in here that will anchor it to the ground. And now we just need to stretch this out, bring it out here and use this, one of these pins to hold it to the ground. We need to have several of these around the tree because the roots do come out in all directions. So we're going to put another one on here. We'll stake it right here. And we'll stretch it out. We'll close this end. And then put another stake in to hold it down. And go on to the next one. Okay, and that's the way it should be. One thing I noticed though is there's black plastic underneath these rocks. And if we just irrigate now, it's going to collect water on top of the plastic. It's not going to help the tree. We could pull up all these rocks and pull up the plastic, probably damage the roots in doing that. Right. Or we could take it the easy way and just take a spading fork and perforate the plastic around those emitters. Now we've got the plastic still serving as a barrier to prevent e evaporation. As the tree grows, this drip line is going to move out. And you can help this keep up just by cutting the line taking these straight uh, barbed pieces and putting them in here like this. Then take another piece of irrigation line, depending on how much you need, and, expanding. and attach it. And now you've just enlarged your ring. Now you have to loosen everything, all these pins. Right. And then you can move the whole ring out. You can do the same thing to those arms. Okay. Now we need to see if it's going to work. So we need to turn the water on. Okay. And these emitters provide half a gallon an hour. You can choose different amounts. And what you have to do is come out here and measure, see how quickly it moistens the soil underneath. You really want to moisten the soil to a depth of about two to three feet for a cherry tree. And you should only need to do that about once every two weeks during the summer, less often in the winter. Tammy, it'd be a good idea to bury this. You've got dogs, so that's really important. If we're in a lawn, we could bury it. It's a little harder there, but here in gravel, it's very easy. All we have to do now is come along here Scrape the gravel aside. Would you like to try that? Sure. On each side? On each side, just to create a trench down to the soil. 
And as you scrape it, I'm just going to come along behind you with the rocks. And, then we'll, and we'll cover, cover it, it up. up. And that's what we're going to do. Okay. You can do that to all of this out here. It's protected then. It's going to irrigate your tree. Great. Thanks for letting us come to your yard to show how to do this technique. Thank you for coming.